chilly breeze. That's why Same Day Heating and Air is now offering our precision tune-up and cleaning for just $69. This includes a 21-point tune-up and cleaning, a carbon monoxide and safety check, and a free filter and green sticker verification. Call 801-SAME-DAY. We asked our number crunchers here to find a way to get you the consistently fast fiber optic heavy duty internet at an affordable price. So here it is. Choose any connection speed up to 40 megs for just $19.99 a month. Seriously? Any speed? Any speed up to 40 megs. What can you do with that kind of power? How about downloading movies without interruption? Or sharing your uncle's rad ukulele video in seconds? Is that a ferret wearing a top hat? Hysterical. Chat, video chat, blog, video blog, not your thing? Fight zombies non-stop for hours, days, weeks on end. And you can do it all wirelessly, like this guy. Does that feel like 1999 internet to you? No, sir. You got that right. Choose any connection speed up to 40 megs of the seriously powerful heavy-duty internet for just $19.99 a month. Seriously. Christmas figurines and ornaments and collectibles, oh my. Utah's most wondrous variety can be found at Modern Display. One-of-a-kind treasures and great gift ideas, too, at Modern Display. Open for the holidays in Salt Lake and Provo. We always buckle up. We always buckle up. Every, every trip, trip. Every trip. Every, every trip. time. We always buckle up. Every trip, every time. Every, every time. time. Responsibility. 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 Responsibility has a reward. Go, go, go. Real Salt Lake. Go, Real Salt Lake. Go, Real Salt Lake. Go, Real Salt Lake. Go, Real Salt Lake. headlines not celebrity sisters but everyday sisters like yours and like mine welcome back to studio five moms and dads buzzing about a recent BYU study on sisters it's getting a lot of coverage in newspapers and in magazines across the country sisters it seems have the power to make you a nicer person even more power than parents mm -hmm. therapist Julie Hanks joins us with more on this study and how the findings can impact your family you got a bunch of sisters well when I saw this research I, I I wanted to read it because I have five sisters and they are so we're really close and so I thought what is what's the impact of having five sisters <laughs> so I yeah I adore my sisters and and they're my some of my closest friends See, I'm with you on that I come from a family of all girls myself and I kind of got little little chills when I read the findings there are some really neat things that have come out of this study what, what mm -hmm. have we learned we've learned that the impact of sisters in protecting against depression so kids who had a sister men and or kid you know boys or girls mm -hmm, who mm -hmm. had a sister were less likely to feel lonely depressed fearful so it can protect having a sister protects against some of those negative emotions during adolescence in particular I want to follow up because I understand I can see girls bonding with their sisters and, and having this uh, from in my family that I'm raising right now, I got three boys and one girl, and sometimes the boys pick on the girl. You know, there's sort of the typical, you right. know, the, the dynamics there. Does the same benefits really happen to a boy from having a sister? The brothers benefit those same benefits? Yes, it's not just sister to sister. It's it's adolescents who have a sister. Did age matter if you were an older sister, for example, or no. a younger sister? No, in age this didn't study, it, and and age span, the difference in age didn't matter either. Hmm. So, and it's even more mentioned, more imp uh, uh, of an impact than parents can have by having a sister? In terms of doing good deeds, siblings had twice the effect that parents had, twice the, the impact of helping kids to do good deeds. So you work with families and parents and kids on a regular basis yes. in your practice. Did this finding surprise you? I mean, do we underestimate at times that sibling relationship? I think we do. Often we do. We think, oh, it, you know, parents and the, the dynamics there, but siblings are so crucial. And this study shows in positive ways that mm -hmm. we can really use those sibling relationships to help 
um, ourselves and our children to you know ha know that they're not alone and to protect them against some mental and emotional issues. Okay, we don't encourage everyone to go out and try to find a sister right now, just, just because of the segment. <laughs> sister but, for sale. But, yeah, but there are things that the average parent can do, things that the parent can do to benefit from the findings of this study. Yes, yes. And the first is to encourage your kids to show affection. One interesting finding in the study was that the lack of affection had more negative effects than, effects than increased conflict. Hmm. Hmm. Does that make sense? So all kids fight, but it's the lack of affection that can create problems. So encourage that, that loving, nurturing, complimenting, giving hugs. So the give your sister a hug, mm -hmm. or the doesn't your sister look cute today, or your sibling, or your brother, mm -hmm. that can really pay off? Yeah, yeah, the physical affection and the positive feedback is really important. And girls do that more naturally than boys do in many, in many situations. <laughs> when we socialize them to be more nurturing and you know so there are a lot of reasons why this is but I think we can encourage that with with all siblings, boys and girls. Yeah, when was the last time you got your teenage boys to give each other give them a hug? Yeah, I, don't, I can't remember on that. <laughs> no, a little bit easier than that. You also say it's really important to encourage kids to show kindness on, on an everyday level. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's really important to to teach that like we just said kids are more impactful in in being kind to other people than parents are so that's so important let me let me ask about emotion because mm -hmm. my girl is like as emotional as all of my boys put together <laughs> and and the emotion sort of spills out girls are naturally more emotional yeah our benefit the benefits come from that as well the emotion side yeah I think we we train girls to be more willing to express emotion but that's something that sisters bring to the table and in fact um, one of my Facebook friends Jennifer child she said that when she was uh, a young single mom her daughter was diagnosed with cancer and her sisters are what who pulled her through that emotional time because they were able to help her process those emotions Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We mentioned a little bit about some of the kindness as well. You, yeah. You've talked about some of the kindness. And girls, I think, naturally, just from my own experience <laughs> with my boys and girls, girls are kinder many times than boys. Is that what I'm getting? No, she's I'm the kind kidding. one. She's the emotional one, too. Yeah, I'll tell yeah. you. There's, there's pros and cons, right? <laughs> but um, uh, another Facebook friend, Andrea Lewis, has eight kids, boys and girls. And she, I thought she had some great ideas. She said, by having sleepovers on Friday nights with movies and treats and sleeping bags, um, you know, she helps them bond, and she also has siblings tell each other good news and gives them, you know, says, hey, give these treats to your, to your siblings to kind of encourage that that kindness. So if you're a parent, you're, you're, you're managing a family dynamic that really struggles with kind of the bickering and mm -hmm. I guess the lack of kindness in this sense. Mm -hmm. What's the way to teach that? I mean, does forced kindness eventually take root if you say, give your sister a hug or, you know, say something nice? Does that actually help? I, I think so. I, we train kids in all different ways, right? We, they don't love learning their ABCs or learning to read, but over time they do it without thinking about it. And I think we can set norms in our family life that are you know, we, we we greet each other with a hug. We share. We say kind things to each other, and it's important to to create those norms and teach those skills as well. I say that we're playing up some of these things that that girls and women, mm -hmm. females, do so so naturally and mm -hmm. so well with with the emotion and showing the kindness. Yeah. Do they also communicate better? Is there a way to play up that with the sisters? Yeah, encouraging frequent communication. There was a New York Times uh, essay on this very topic, and and Deborah Tannen, her her assessment was that it's the frequency of communication with sisters that has a real healing effect and another Facebook friend said of uh, her sister she said you know we check in it's not always a big conversation but mm -hmm. we check in every other day and we share everything it's gotten us through deaths divorces marriages all kinds of things and so it's that frequency that sisters can provide to their siblings uh, of that checking in. There's something mm -hmm. that can, I think is healing about knowing that I can go to somebody and they'll be there for it's me. It's that comfort base. If I go more than 48 hours without talking to my sister Lindsay, it becomes a, where have you been all my life? Where are you okay? Me too. Is everything all right? But sometimes it's not a long conversation, like you said. It's mm -hmm. that little check in, but it's nice to know someone's there to check in. Right. So it doesn't always have to be this deep emotional conversation. Right. It 
it can just be that, like you said, Brooke, checking in. How are you doing? Are, you know, I'm here for you. Yeah. And don't we all want to know that someone is there for us? We really need them. And as parents, how do we use those sisters and the girls in the family to help cut down on conflict <laughs> in the family? Because some, sometimes pretty. they're the ones that rile it up, I'm telling you. <laughs> That's about no. my child comment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I think to, to really step in, sometimes parents are like, well, I'll let the kids work it out. No, kids don't have the skills to work things out. That's why they have parents. <laughs> so step in, encourage, encourage that. And conflict isn't all bad. It helps kids learn how to manage emotions and how to uh, resolve, you know, relationship differences. So conflict's not all bad, but you don't want it to get out of control. And know that it is a responsibility at times to mm -hmm. help manage that. I don't mean, be afraid to step not in. Not be frustrated if you have to jump in maybe more often than you'd like to. Right. We're going to teach them the skills to manage that, and that's going to help them throughout the rest of their lives. Good perspective. Okay, you can find more on this study and Julie's tips on how to tap into that positive power of sisters on our website, studio5.ksl.com. And when we come back, another family relationship issue. Julie is going to respond to a viewer email about dealing with a narcissistic mother. That's next. <laughs> Childhood depression is often in hiding. If your child is between the ages of 7 and 11 and experiences frequent sadness, social isolation, or an increase in anger or difficulty in school, then your child may be struggling with depression and eligible to participate in a clinical research study evaluating an investigational medication for children with depression. All study-related medications will be provided at no cost. Call 877-777-2235 or visit kidswithdepression.com. Get in the action behind the scenes at Broadview University. Learn the skills you need to bring TV, movies, and live performances to life in our new Bachelor of Fine Arts program in Entertainment Design. Pursue a career in...